Wow. <laughs> what do you say? What a night. What a night. Ready, thank you. New York State Baseball Hall of Fame Committee, thank you. Such a great honor to be here with all of you tonight. Thank you to all um, for the 2023 class. Thank you. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Uh, well deserved. The memories of so many stories, great stories about baseball, baseball life. Tonight, you know, I was thinking about it. I get to reflect on a baseball life, a baseball life that I had. I haven't gone down that road in a very long time. It's been a very long time since I've been down that road to think about the baseball life and what baseball is really all about. And I was just thinking about all the different speakers and everybody was great. Everybody was remarkable and their words and everything they had to say. And I was thinking about the legacy and family and things that Tazio was talking about. <clears throat> just as a baseball player, what a life is like, what we go through, what we deal with. And I kind of wanted to go back to the beginning of where it was, you know, me coming out of Crenshaw High and thinking about the year of 1979, we played at Dodger Stadium in the city championship and we lost to Granada Hills. We just didn't lose to Granada Hills, but the guy that came from third base to pitch to close us out in that game was John Elway. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just the memory that I had about how great baseball was growing up in Los Angeles, California, you know, growing up in South Central, uh, <coughs> South Central LA, California, and experiencing all the great players that have come out of California, from the Hubie Brooks, Ozzie Smith, Eddie Murray. You can go down the list of all the great players that came before myself. Chili Davis, <clears throat> then you go down the list, and then there was me and Eric Davis. Me and Eric Davis, the one believed in ourselves that we were going to one day play in the major leagues and become very successful as a major league baseball player. There was no doubt that we knew we were going to be successful. Why? Because Eric Davis was on the same team I was in County League Baseball. <laughs> and he was batting leadoff and playing shortstop, and I was hitting third in the lineup. And a guy by the name of Chris Brown was hitting fourth in Atlanta. And we were, we were a pretty productive ball club. And think about the fact that um, the success that we wanted to have, that we had to have a dream to believe. You know, baseball is just a game, but as a kid growing up, you have to have that dream where you believe in yourself and you believe that you can do it no matter what it looks like, no matter what the condition is, no matter what the circumstances are. And I'm talking about the fact of growing up in the ghetto and, and, and brokenness and loss and emptiness and everything around you, gangs, drugs, street crimes and everything, and you make a decision that this is what you're going to do. And we made that decision and we did it. And I'm forever thankful for it, forever thankful for the challenges, forever thankful for the career. For everything thankful for the fact of going through the minor leagues, and I just remember being a number one draft pick by the New York Mets and going through the minor leagues, and I remember them getting him out of class and saying, you've been selected number one in the draft. So I said, okay. And they said, you're going to the New York Mets. I said, well, where the heck is New York at? <laughs> I had no idea where I was going to go. I had no idea what I was walking into. But I can tell you this. It became the greatest gift of my life when I found out about playing in New York City. The experience that I had going through the minor league system and understanding baseball and understanding going to Kingsport, Tennessee, going to Lynchburg, Virginia. And I remember experiencing in Lynchburg, Virginia, I've been, I came very close to quitting because I was a top draft pick and I just remember playing there and I remember People in the stands, the way they were treating me and the things they were saying to me. They were calling me out of my name, boys, and this and that. You suck, you this and that. And I just remember my manager clearly. Gene Dusan was my manager. He, was, he would always tell me when I was running back to the dugout, don't look up there. Just don't look up there. 
because I know he was thinking that I might just take my Louisville slugger. Because <laughs> I would go up there and eliminate quite a few people. <laughs> but you're thinking about it, it was a 19-year-old kid who had to realize that if I wanted to play baseball, it wasn't going to be easy. It was going to be a tough road. Being selected number one, expectations and pressure was going to be there. Could I live up to the hype of who I was? Then I came this close to quitting, and I remember the Mets organization said, give it another year. And I went to Jackson, Mississippi, the Texas League. And I hit 34 home runs, stole 45 bases, and I became a ball player. I just remember that year, how I became a ball player. It did not make me a man, but it made me a ball player. So let's make that clear, you know, what a man looks like and what a ball player looks like. like a ball player is someone that puts on a uniform and has the ability to play and he can, he can play at any level and with any expectations, with no pressure, worrying about the pressure, the fact that it's there, but you learn how to climb above the pressure. And I was that type of player once I developed that that year in 1982. Then I go to AAA the next year, then I'm in the big leagues, 1983. And I just remember getting to the big leagues, my dream of getting to the big leagues. And the fact that my father, who was a raging alcoholic, who rejected me and my family, and left us for broken and emptiness, and left us for dead. I just remember the fact that he said I would never amount to anything. And I thought to myself, when I got to the league, I have a rod. And I did. I conquered something that my father had said about me as a kid, the rejection, the beatings, and the struggles of coming home for the last time, pulling out a shotgun and saying he wanted to kill the whole family. Had it not been for my sweet little old mother getting me and my brothers out of the house, it could have been a tragedy in my life that night. Because we came this close to killing my father. So I'm forever thankful for my mother. I'm a blessed man. I'm, I, I'm standing here today because I'm living the legacy of my mother. I'm living the legacy of my mother raising five kids by herself and taking care of all of us, providing for all of us, to go to school and put clothes on our back. And my mother would pass away at a very early age. She would pass away at the age of 55 from terminal breast cancer. But little did I know as I was playing Major League Baseball and I would go on to be successful and achieving all these great things playing Major League Baseball, my mother was behind the scenes of her life she was praying for me while I was living a life playing Major League Baseball. Amen. I had no idea what was going on in my life because my life was unraveling. I was falling apart through the scenes of the lifestyle. I had said I wouldn't be like my father when I was growing up, but I ended up being just like my father. From what you see in a household, usually play out in a real life. A broken home, brokenness is real. Lawlessness brings about brokenness. I come from a broken situation, but the uniform just covered up my real pain. I was never well. Had I known how good I was, had I ever been well on the inside, there is no telling what kind of baseball player I could have ended up being. So I had to experience life at such a high level of expectations and and not being like, you know, through players and media and so many other different channels. I had to experience all that in my life. And I'm grateful for all of it because all of that and everything that I had to go through, you know, the broken life and, you know, having cancer twice and losing my left kidney in my second surgery and going through addiction and all these things, but still putting on the uniform and being able to excel at the highest level because I can tell you one thing, I knew myself better than anybody else knew me. And I knew how great I was when I put the uniform on. But that did not make me a man. That just made me a baseball player putting the uniform on and achieving all the wonderful things 
that I was able to achieve. I'm forever grateful for it. But little did I know, I didn't know that my life would take a turn and twist and go down so many dark roads and I would end up being persecuted because of my shortcomings, public perception, media outlets. But I can tell you, as I stand here today, I'm always thankful for the fact of what a baseball family is all, is all about. All the coaches, all the scouts, you guys know what I'm talking about. The baseball family is a family that's netted together and everybody truly care about other people. And I had that in my life. I had it amongst several players. And two players that I idolized when I was playing with, that I wanted what they had, but I just didn't have the guts to do what they were doing. And that was Gary Carter, and that was Mookie Wilson. Guys, I got a chance to see to live a life playing Major League Baseball and successful, and the uniform didn't have them, the money didn't have Gary Carter, the money didn't have Mookie Wilson. I saw them live a life that was different and separate, and, and the way they acted, and, and I, I really wanted to be like that, but I just didn't have the courage to walk like that. But I knew in my heart. that one day I would be able to fulfill the promises of my success on the field and my destiny off the field. The success on the field was great. The memories were great. The encounters with so many different people, so many wonderful people that are here tonight, the players and the scouts and the coaches and everyone that has been up here and speaking about their life and their passion and understanding, you know, what this life is all about. It's a very difficult life and it's a very lonely life at some times. And I think a lot of people don't understand how that could be when one is so successful and so talented. It doesn't really matter how successful and talented you, you are. If you have not been well, made well on the inside, it really doesn't make a difference. And I understood that throughout the life of being a baseball player. I'm thankful for guys like Rick Cerrone, uh, who has played a great role in my life. Guys like Chris, Coach, Jay Howard, people have that have played a very positive role. All the guys I played with, I respect all the players that I played with. Did I like them all the time? No. <laughs> But that's part of it. You know, that's the life we live as an athlete and one that's playing at the highest level. But the most two important people in my life would turn out to be not the guys I played baseball with. It would be my mother, who was interceding for me when she was dying. And it would be my wife, Tracy, who I'm married to today for 17 years. A man needs more than just a uniform to understand what a man is supposed to be. And I needed more than just a uniform to understand who is Daryl Strawberry, what's the importance of my life, what's the reason for my life. And I was always more concerned about the reason for my life instead of what I was accomplishing as an athlete. And I'm very thankful for the fact that I was able to do that but to be able to become the man that I am today and, and, and have the life that I have today and reach the multitude of people and, and travel and could never imagine that Daryl Strawberry would come and be a minister of the gospel and he would honor God and he would praise God and he would love people and he would care for people and, and he would do the, the, the right things, not when just everybody's looking, but when people are not looking. So I'm thankful for my wife, Tracy. I'm thankful for the people that stuck with me because this life is not really all about us and what we accomplish, but it's what we do with what we have. 
in our hand. And I've been given a mantle that's far greater than I could ever imagine to help somebody else. Because I'm a strong believer in to, to whom much is given, much is required. And there's been a lot given to me over the years and the fame and the fortune, but I understand that there's so much more required out of me to give back to make a difference in the community and be more of a leader in such a different way and not just an athlete. We're going to come and go. The uniform is going to be off. And then, who are you? I walked away from baseball. And when I finally walked away from baseball, that was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I was able to put my real uniform on and really start to do the work that I was created to do. But the memories will always be there. The fond memories of winning, celebrating great times with guys that you played with. You can never take that away. And Jay, by the Jay, I just want to remind you, my number is number 18, you said 16. <laughs> I know you get a little nervous, you think it's Dr. Darrell, you know, that's how they all think, you know, we, we're the same, you know, because they always thought that, you know, you're, you're black and you look alike and you... <laughs> <laughs> but tonight I'm here to say thank you. I'm here to say to represent New York City, New York baseball. Thank you to the fans. Thank you for what you guys have done to me. Not only just as a baseball player, but you, you created something greater than a baseball player. You created a man, you know, that stood strong in the midst of adversities. A man that realized that it was more to life than just the problems and the struggles that you have. That you still have something that you're able to give back and help somebody else. And at the end of the day, that's what this life is really all about, is not, not, not how many home runs I've been hitting, not how many trophies I have, but it's the man that I have become, the man that I can <clears throat> sit here and truly say, I'm not a victim, I'm an overcomer. I'm a, I'm a clean overcomer of life. I'm not a victim of what happened to me. I'm an overcomer because of the fact of uh, the brokenness of my life, and then I would end up getting healed, and I would end up becoming a true follower of Christ, and denying myself and picking up my cross daily, and 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 walking, and living it, and not ashamed of who I am, and not afraid to talk about my faith. Uh, I, I I respect so much of Gary Carter because his faith, he wore his faith on his smile. And I wish so many of us could understand that, the importance of what that was like uh, to me growing up when I saw that and, and realizing that's what I wanted more than anything else. I was able to have the baseball ability to achieve all the great things as a player, but I wanted to be the man that I was never, that I never saw in my household. And I would end up becoming that man. Amen. And today, I am truly grateful and honored by all of you. New York City, Mets, Yankees, you guys made me the greatest player that I could ever be. I wasn't supposed to go to the next level, to the Hall of Fame. I think God had a bigger picture for me, which was called the Hall of Faith, to be able to do something that I probably could have never imagine or think that I'm not qualified to do. But I do know one thing, I don't have to be qualified because he qualifies the call in a person's life. So to all of you that are here, to the New York State Baseball Hall of Fame, Ray, Ray, so many of you here that know me, you know I love you. You know the person I am. I, I, I haven't, yeah, I've changed in a different way, but I haven't changed from the person that my mother raised. Because I can tell you in this audience tonight, my mother raised a good, healthy young man. I made the decision to live a heathen lifestyle 
playing Major League Baseball because of what was in front of me and the opportunities that were in front of me, and I made the wrong decisions. But today, I don't make those decisions today. I live according to what's important. I live according to loving people, just like Christ loved me when I was a sinner and I needed a savior. And he's still the same person today, and he will be the same person every day. And as I close with this one scripture, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. It is the wonderful working power that has changed me and made me a better man today. I am a good husband and got wonderful kids and we're blessed. Me and my wife Tracy have been married for 17 years and we, we got nine children. I always say God had a great sense of humor. He gave me my own starting nine. <laughs> Just to remind me that you did play Major League Baseball. <laughs> and I was fortunate to play at the highest level, even though I wasn't well. So I don't live with a belly full of regrets. I live with the hope that's here every day, that I get up and I say thank you. And I understand the symbol of the cross Christ hanging on it for me. He paid the ultimate price that I will be able to have life and have it more abundantly. So to all of you, the class of 2023, to every last one of you, you rock the house tonight. No one is bigger than anyone. We are all the same. We are all people. And if we can get to the reality of what's important in our younger generation of people, can get to the reality of coming back to love people, this world will be a different place. But until then, we must continue to pray for everyone. So let me close out with a prayer. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you for everyone that is here tonight. We thank you for everyone that has received from every speaker. Congratulations to all the class of 2023 New York State Hall of Fame. All well-deserved, Father. Everybody has a story, but you have the great story and you have the last story. So we thank you for this night. We ask that you cover everyone that's here tonight. And Father, we send this petition up to you and we ask that you will seal it, you will put a hedge of protection around all of us. Father, this country and everything that's going on, we pray that you would be in the midst of it, Father, during these difficult times. Darkness is all around us, evil is all around us. Keep our children safe. Make our streets safe again. Father, we pray for those in government, Father, that they would repent and turn from their wicked ways and ask you to help them. We love you. We thank you for the gift that you have given all of us in our baseball story life and all these wonderful athletes, coaches, and scouts. In Christ's name, we give you glory. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.